Hello everyone! In today's video, we will explain how to use the MATLAB control system toolbox. We will learn how to define state space, transfer function models, and how to compute responses. That is, we will learn how to compute step response, impulse response, response to initial conditions, and response to an arbitrary control input. Following my standard practice, I have created a post that you can see over here that nicely summarizes everything that I will explain in this video. So if you don't have enough time to watch this video, you can simply read this post and everything will be clear. A link to this post is given in description below. So the basic usage of MATLAB control system toolbox will be explained on the following example. So what you can see over here is a classical example of a mass spring damper system. Basically you have a mass M and you have a force on one side pushing this mass or displacing it from its equilibrium position. We assume that there is a damper with a damping constant KD and then there is a spring KS. So through damper and spring this mass is attached to the boundary or to the wall. And X is basically a degree of freedom, it measures the distance from the equilibrium point. So if when x is zero, the mass is in its equilibrium point. And of course, you can analyze stability, you can compute the step response, you can use this example to explain many concepts in control systems theory. So from the second Newton's law, we obtain the differential equation describing the motion of the mass spring damper system it's given by the equation 1. I'm not going to derive the equation. If you want to see how to derive this equation and if you want uh, some other information about Newton models, about state space models, etc. how to derive them, here they are. I've made a separate post, a separate video on how to derive this equation and how to derive a state space model from this equation. You can simply click over here. Now, by applying the Laplace transformation to the equation 1 and by assuming that all the initial conditions are equal to 0, we obtain equation 2. Basically, we know that the second derivative and it's a Laplace transform equivalent is s squared x of s. Similarly, Laplace transform of x dot is s x of s and of x is simply x of s and here the force is directly transformed into its complex system equivalent actually in complex domain equivalent from this equation that is from the equation 2 we can simply derive the equation 3 by dividing x of s by f of s the right hand side will be equal to 1 over ms squared plus kds plus ks and this is our transfer function You should keep in mind that transfer functions are always derived when the initial conditions are equal to zero. Now, in order to derive the state space model, we need to introduce the state space variables. So, we will call x as x1 and x dot as x2. Now, by differentiating x1, basically taking the first derivative, we obtain x1 dot is equal to x dot, and from this equation we see that equal to x2. Similarly, by taking the second derivative of x dot, we obtain x2 dots, and by coupling this equation with this equation, we can obtain the representation, the state space representation of our dynamics. So in the state space form, once we perform these steps and we define matrices, we obtain the equation number 5. So the equation number 5 is the state equation corresponding to spring mass damper system. And the next step, of course, is to define the output equation. The output equation is defined by simply saying that, okay, we want to observe x1, that is, we want to observe the position. So our output equation tells us the variable that we want to observe. In this case, since we want to observe x1, our C matrix will be 1 times 0, and since we don't have input, 
acting on the output, directly acting on the output, since it's a dynamical system, it always has some delay, then here we have d is equal to zero. So equation, equations number five and six represent the state space description of our original mass spring damper system. Okay, so the next step is basically to define the state space representation and the transfer function representation of the system in MATLAB. So here is my MATLAB script. Basically, the first step is to define the system constant. I'm going to assume a mass of 10 kg, KD, of equal, KD equal to 1, and KS equal to 10. The first step is to define the transfer function representation. Let us go back and let us analyze our transfer function. So our transfer function looks like this. In num numerator we have 1 and in the denominator we have ms squared plus kds plus ks. So if we go back to our MATLAB script, in numerator we are simply going to write 1 since this is the coefficient of the lowest power in the numerator. The lowest power is s to the power of 0, that is, that's a constant, and this multiplies 1. So the 1 is the first coefficient of the, no, of the, the, the uh, numerator. Similarly, we are going to define the coefficients in the denominator. So let's see the denominator. We have m, kd, and ks. m corresponds to the oldest power, kd corresponds to the power 1, and ks corresponds to the s to the power 0. That is, we define an array where the first coefficient corresponds to s squared, the second coefficient corresponds to s to the power 1, and the third coefficient corresponds to s to the power 0. And we simply call the function tf, we specify numerator and we specify denominator. So let's execute these lines of codes and let's see what will happen. Good. So here is our transfer function, mass, kd, and ks. These are the constants. Okay. Similarly, we can define a state space system representation. Let us go back and let's look into our system representation. Here is the matrix A, here is the matrix B, and here is the matrix C, and finally, matrix D is zero. So A, here is our A, you define a matrix. B, again, you define a matrix. C, a matrix, or actually the row vector, and D is zero. And once you have A, B, C, and D, you call the function SS, which defines the state space model. So here is our state space model. Here are the matrices. Okay, so let us compute the system step response. So the system step response is computed when the control input is equal to heavy side function that is equal to one. There are two ways. The first way is to use the transfer function to compute the system step response. We are going to simply execute the first code line, so the code line 26. So here is our response. The response is stored in step 1 corresponding to the response and time step 1 corresponds to the vector. So if you want to plot the results, you can simply write plot, specify the time vector, and here's our result. It's a step response. The system is stable and it's going to settle at certain point. And this point is not going to be equal to 1 since we have some attenuation in our step response. Okay, another and more elegant way to compute this step response is to just to select the step W and to execute. So let's see what do we get. Here it is. Here we don't return the arguments and MATLAB knows that we want to automatically plot the step response. So here is our step response but MATLAB automatically puts time on the x-axis and amplitude on the y-axis. Similarly, we can use the transfer, we can use actually the state space model to compute the state, 
to compute the step response, we simply write step and we specify the state space model name. And the results will be the same. Here are the results. Using a similar strategy, we, we can compute the system impulse response. There are two ways to compute the impulse response. The first way is to specify the transfer function, and the second way is to, trans to specify the system state space response. The MATLAB function is called impulse. So we can compute the impulse response, and let's see how the impulse response looks like. So here's our impulse response. Obviously, since system is stable, the impulse response will approach zero. So if we use the state space model, we will obtain the equivalent or the same results. Here are the results. Then, the next step is to compute the initial condition, the response of the system to initial conditions. So first we specify the initial condition, 5 for position and 5 for velocity, and then we simply execute this line of code, initial. And let's see our initial system response. Nothing is plotted here since I'm specifying the output argument, so if you want to plot, you will simply execute this line of code. That is, you will execute just initial, and here are the results. Again, since the system is stable, the initial condition response will die out. Okay, and the final step is to compute the response of the system to an arbitrary signal and the initial condition. So first of all, we specify the initial condition. So here is our initial condition. Then we specify the time signal for which we want to look or for which we want to compute the observation. Time signal will start from zero. It will go from it will go to 100 with the steps of 0 0.01. Then we specify our input function. Here's our input function. We can plot it. So here's our input function. It's a sinusoidal signal. And finally, we can compute the system response. So here's the system response. This is our original input signal, a sinusoidal function. And this is how the system will behave. This is the system's response. We see some transient time, right? Some transient response approximately until time second 40 and after this transient response dies out the output of the system will become a sinusoidal signal of course the sinusoidal signal will be attenuated and we will have some phase difference however the frequency will not change since this is a linear system okay thank you very much for watching this video if you like this video please subscribe or support my channel. Thank you very much and have a nice day.